too soon too and we have the next speaker hopefully uh only is somewhere there yes you are you are so close and near <laughs> that <laughs> i almost didn't see you here okay but only uh is from kone and kone is not an elevator company like everybody thinks it's it's about people flow so moving people isn't that right um have i now yeah. learned uh, yes yeah and um so only is talking to us about APIs and platform business towards API economy and telling the case of Kone. And I have to confess, we have some history with Olli. We have created this new uh, API economy course, which is available in German, Chinese, and English. So I'll post a link there. But now, Olli, please go ahead and start telling your case. Thank you, Marjokka. Let's put some slides up. So first of all, great to be here. Awesome to be here for the second time now. And I want to tell you a story of a rather old company. We are a 110 year old company. So I want to tell you a bit about how a corporation like this can evolve in their thinking about the business and how it in a way can become such a stage that API start making sense and you can start exploring business models. But first a couple of introductory words about myself. So I have technical and business background. So I have started as a coder. So it's great to be now be able to talk about the intersection of technology and business. That's of course where most of us want to be, I think. And uh, I've been uh, working on different products from consumer electronics to cloud services to virtual reality. And now, now a lot of B2B business, uh, digitalizing mines and now buildings and even elevators and things like that for the past 16, 17 years already. So great to have the chance to share a bit of the background that I have learned and how this reflects to the company where I work now. But basically, as Mario already pointed out, uh, you might know the Connect brand from our elevators and our escalators. And that's, of course, what's visible and uh, what you can see when you walk around the city. However, we don't want to see ourselves that way. We want to consider ourselves to be a people flow company and uh, to be able to make cities into better places to live. But what does this have to do with APIs? What does this have to do with ecosystems? And I even mentioned the digital platforms in the header there, didn't I? So let's, in a way, try to build an understanding of how this kind of company that starts from a very basic manufacturing industry can, in a way, take steps towards becoming a digitalization house, utilizing APIs and platforms. And I'm hoping this story, in a way, is re relating to your industry as well and whatever cor corporation or company you're representing. So maybe there's some things we can learn here. Maybe some of the, let's say, hurdles we have faced as well are familiar to you. When we think about a company like this, like I mentioned, 110 years of history. So that's a lot of baggage, if you may. And of course, the beginning was uh, manufacturing. So heavy machinery, elevators, escalators huge things to manufacture, very complicated devices. And of course, a big, big part of what our corporation is still doing today is that manufacture. But then the quite logical step is that the company starts thinking about services. How do we keep this equipment up and running? How do we help the customers uh, do more than just buy the equipment? Then you start thinking about digital products and services. What does the digitalization mean for us? In our road, the next game APIs, and I'll come back to that, why we started opening up APIs, what does that mean? And once you have gone that step to digitalization, you have started to look at APIs, you start thinking about platforms, right? So what can you do with digital platforms? What does that mean for your business? And eventually that gets you to the, my topic of interest, which is ecosystems. What does it actually mean that you're starting to work with an ecosystem of companies? So I believe that quite a few corporations and companies go through these stages. So in a way, they take small steps. It's hard to jump 
from manufacturing to digital ecosystems in one big go. So maybe from the uh, journey that Kone has taken, uh, can actually lead, like, give us some examples and some good thinking of how this could be done in other industries and maybe even help you get your company into that next step. Or perhaps you're consulting a company so then it's equally useful for you to learn the steps around the way. So of course the first step, like I said, is the services. So you understand that if you're building elevators and escalators, they might break down. So you need to be able to provide services. You need to have someone who comes to the site and fixes them. That's a quite logical step. And that's something, again, our company has been doing for multiple decades already. So I'm not going to talk that much about that because this is API days after all. So let's rather talk about the digitalization part. So once you have stepped into the service business and started understanding that the value for your customer is not created by giving them a piece of equipment, but the value is created by having that equipment running and providing that people flow that we are talking about. At the end of the day, the elevator is moving people up and down in a building so that they can do whatever the purpose of that building is, from office to a shop to a residential house. So then you start seeing some opportunities about digitalization and linking them together. So we have first started thinking about what do we do when we can connect these equipment to a cloud, connect them then together, bring something, uh, some kind of intelligence into that service aspect that we are bringing, adding intelligence, safety and transparency to those devices wherever they are around the globe. And that globalization is also, of course, important aspect because we also work in roughly 60 countries around. So what happens after that? You realize that just connecting the equipment is not enough. You want to connect the rest of the things as well. You want to realize that your customers need to be connected. Your users are connected and your employees are connected. So then you start already thinking about what's the back end I have to build for this? What kind of infrastructure and background services I need, a technology platform? some kind of management system. You need to have IoT device management and things like that. And obviously APIs come into play pretty soon when you start considering this bigger pitch. So it's not just the equipment connected, it's everything. And how those interact together, how do you enable that in the most fluent manner? And once you have reached that stage that you have equipment connected, you have users connected, all those different stakeholders, then you start thinking about what can you actually do with those connected users, connected equipment. Then you start considering data analysis. This is something we have done as well over the last few years. So you start realizing that the people flow can only happen if those equipment are carrying the people up and down the building, right? So then what, is, what are the things you can analyze? You can analyze how the doors are functioning, how the signalization of those elevators are moving, how is the leveling, so how do you arrive at a certain floor? What's the position, the mileage, who, how are the equipment being used and so forth. And by connecting, collecting the data and connecting this to the different user and the different stakeholders, you start getting a bit better understanding, of course, of what needs to happen in order for you to keep that flow going. After all, the flow must go on, as we say. So then the next thing is that now I have built the connectivity to my equipment, connectivity to my customers. I have built some kind of data analytics uh, understanding. The next thing that came to our mind in our company was, of course, that, hey, we could have some outside users of those elevators. So now we have been building our own services that can do digitalization, do this understanding and analyzing how the equipment are used. So the next step, of course, is that what other services what other digital solutions could be utilizing these elevators? So the first thing we did, and this is now a few years ago already, is that, of course, considering that we can open an API, an API that can actually tell the elevator where it needs to go, or at least make that elevator call without someone pressing the button. So quite a natural step. And then you need to start thinking about what kind of users you have. What does it actually mean for a company to start building external APIs? And if you haven't started with that mindset, of course, when you built that infrastructure, as you can imagine, there can be some hurdles. So at this point, the company starts also seeing that this API first design might be quite useful for those solutions of our own as well. And that has really been happening in Kone as well. 
now we've been learning after we opened up the first APIs, how it's super important that everything we design is based on the fact that we might want to open this up for other users, externals going forward. Then once we have realized that there's a benefit in opening that API, what we started realizing is that actually we can build a whole platform around this thing. So nowadays, our elevators, we call them digital experience elevators, they're actually connected to a digital platform. So instead of having one API open, now the whole elevator is an IoT device that provides a digital platform that can then link multiple different solutions together and create value for our customers in different ways that we couldn't even imagine at first. So now it's, of course, Gone is building our own solutions, but we're also letting our customers design their applications. And then we are bringing third parties in. So now we have these third party companies who are building something for their building and they realize that they have a linkage to people moving. Hence the people flow, hence again the linkage to elevators and our understanding of how people are using that building. Interesting step. And what we did in this kind of platform thinking is then, of course, we start introducing these partners, we start innovating with them to understand what kind of use cases we can actually enable in the building. Now that we have the connected equipment, we have that those external APIs and we have a digital platform. So now we are actually able to innovate with other companies. We can bring complementary solutions to the building that didn't even consider that elevators could be part of the value chain. So now, for example, we have robots moving in the building. They can do room service, for example. They bring your drink to your room in a hotel. Perhaps they deliver that Amazon parcel of yours all the way to your front door. Or they do and do cleaning of the building and are able to use the elevator to go up and down. So now we can enable them continuously, out, completely autonomously. Or we can do digital access controls. So we can do digital locks, for example enabling that now that you move to the building, you no longer need to call the elevator separately. The elevator knows where you're staying. If you're going to hotel, for example, they, it knows you're on the sixth floor at your home. It knows what is your destination floor and so forth. So we can make it much easier again to move around the building. And we can also link it to multiple different kind of management systems. So you can have visitor management, of course, figuring out who comes to visit who, I no longer need to go downstairs to meet my guests. And of course, you can do more regular building automation. So understanding like building management system, for example, digital twins. You need to understand what's happening in the building, how are the equipment used, and so forth. And then once you have started having this first kind of uh, innovations with individual companies, there starts to be more eye-opening opportunities. Sorry about the Finnish text, by the way, on the slide, but this is a, a quote from uh, Finland's biggest newspaper, Helsingin Sanomat. We did this kind of innovation project last year, where there's the Ready building, which is both the tallest residential building in Finland, as well as a shopping mall. So there we actually interacted with multiple different companies from Kesko, Asumi, Dimalok, and Forum Virium. And we were able to build this kind of solution where the residents of this tall building were able to order groceries or food from the downstairs and that the robot would be able to deliver those groceries to their uh, outdoor up upstairs, wherever they lived. So here you start seeing that we have already multiple different companies providing value. So at least five different companies were needed in order to fulfill this full end-to-end -end service in a building, making it much smarter and more useful, first of all, during COVID, of course, but also consider your elderly person, it's hard to go to store or simply convenience. So then, then the company starts thinking that, okay, in addition to having these individual partners that provide one solution, you start realizing that you can create more dynamic use cases. You can go way further in your innovation when you interact with multiple companies. So that then requires a further ecosystem thinking. So going beyond that one platform you have. And this is challenging, definitely challenging. It was already a challenge for our company and probably many others that when you first open up APIs, you start sharing data, you start working with other companies to provide solutions. But now when you start looking at the whole ecosystem and you need to start thinking about what are the different platform players there, 
how many different solution providers there are and system integrators and, and different management systems and all of these are starting to be digital. And you realize that there is value in creating ecosystem solutions, uh, building, building things together and extending the services you can do. But it is challenging. How, do, how does one company then go around understanding what is their role to play? And you used to be the one who defines everything you do on your own. And now you're only part of something way bigger. And what I like to talk about is uh, ecosystem of ecosystems. So in a way, at least for us, the thinking has evolved that, of course, we have our own digital platform. That's our own orchestrated ecosystem. We are the hub of this small ecosystem that's really around the elevators. Whatever is value creation around that elevator itself, that's our ecosystem. We are the digital platform provider. We are the hub. But at the same time, we want to provide data. We want to provide interfaces to multiple other ecosystems out there. I've been talking about smart buildings, about digitalizing, automatizing things. And you can even go beyond the building, you can consider the city itself. Then we start seeing that, of course, our company is quite a small piece in the whole value chain. You can consider the smart building as an own ecosystem. Maybe you have a smart lightning ecosystem. So let's turn off the lights when there's no longer people somewhere, for example. How is the security handled in these kind of modern buildings? That's, of course, linked to how people are moving. So maybe we can provide some kind of information to this ecosystem and so forth. So now, now we are no longer just a provider of our own ecosystem, but we are also a member of other ecosystems. And this is, again, a very important mind, sh mind shift and you know, a cultural thing that the company has to understand and has to adopt if they want to create further value beyond that one platform of theirs. And that then also creates a challenge of how you create the APIs. So if you define your APIs just meant for your own digital platform, you can very clearly define that the value creation is intended for certain kind of companies, for example. You're only building APIs for those robots, for example, I mentioned. But then if I want to be able to provide information about the movement of people or how the maintenance technicians are working in a smart building, I have to think about the APIs very differently. And that then links to, I saw some great talks earlier today about API portals. So how do you approach defining the APIs? What kind of examples do you give? How do you articulate the value of this API now that you're basically opening up the possibilities of one data interface to multiple different use cases? And you don't even want to necessarily define that this is only meant for certain use cases. So I think that's that's super interesting and something that we are just now in a way exploring as a company, to be honest. And with that, we can basically then go way beyond what we are doing. And this is just an example of one innovation project we just announced last year. But I think it's a good example of showing how we can go way beyond that elevator itself and how other companies can also start thinking of how this API thinking and ecosystem thinking and really push them outside of their own core business. So now we are looking, for example, we are no longer just working on the smart buildings and their digitalization. We're also considering how can we support smart construction? Because even there, super important how people and materials are flowing. But what is the future living? Can we somehow contribute to the future living and all the solution creation there, smart maintenance and so forth? So it opens up a lot of doors and you no longer consider just your platform, but start thinking in a way from API economy point of view. And what are all the different things you can provide value for? And finally, I think the thing that really makes difference there is also starting to think the network effects. So I already mentioned we have different kind of APIs, different resources we are sharing. So is the value growing with the number of users? Of course, if, if I'm able to connect more elevators and get more statistics from different buildings and learn from that, I can utilize a direct network effect with the users increasing my product becomes more valuable and so forth. And at the same time, of course, if I have these solution providers providing a nice supply and demand network effect, more, more solution providers working together, like my example from the ready, they can innovate together, then I can create even further networks effects. And also, if I just consider about sharing data, if I can share data about how the people are moving, 
how people are interacting in those buildings, I can again go way beyond what we can do as a company alone. So very, very interesting times and uh, definitely something that you, you wouldn't have imagined a couple of even few years ago, let alone 10 years ago, elevator company could even be considering. But yeah, then to sum up, basically, you can put all of this as, uh, I like this Zayson words, as you may. So we have gone through the servitization for a long time. Digitalization is that what everyone is talking about. ABIization is the topic of this uh, conference to begin with. And of course, we are doing platformization. And now finally, what I'm really trying to push in my, my job, in my company, is this ecosystemization. How do we go? beyond what we are building, even beyond our own platforms and towards that API economy. And with that, I thank you for your patience. And I hope to have some questions. And of course, please connect afterwards with me as well if you want to discuss this topic further. I'd be very happy to exchange some thoughts. Thank you, Oli, so much. I'm I'm hard pressed finding any questions in the chat because everybody's just turning into your fan here <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of thanks about uh your presentation and the great example and i think that like like emeline was pointing out in the chat we kind of came from software ages like what is really happening with the api economy to like how do you actually sell your apis or the stuff that you have the apis with and then the bigger case of of ecosystems and really making uh, an impact with with uh, building together and now after your talk we are going to go to the embedded platforms which is kind of where, what happens inside of those elevators and other business flow elements and our people flow elements so i think that um this is this is turning out really nicely but there's uh, there's some comments here uh kind of about the uh, turning from like APIs to actually uh, uh, APIs and platform economy to, to more or less data economy or uh, monetizing the data that is moving there. So what's what's your kind of take on that? What are you actually selling <laughs> there? Is it is it elevators or is it data about the elevators or access to the elevators? But, or something else than elevator. Yeah, like I was trying to say, we're basically evolving our thinking. So it's a, yeah. to, to be honest, we are testing still. So of course, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, our core business at Kone is we are selling elevators, we are maintaining those elevators. But now everything is digitalizing. Those buildings that used to be dumb, if you may, they're not smart. So they want those interfaces. They want to use the elevators remotely and they want to just get data as well. Just providing the data about what's happening in the building is starting to be valuable as well. Yeah. So I think that's exactly what makes it so interesting. Interesting to look at this holistically, this ecosystem play that there's multiple different ways you can do business. And of course, those that's can even right. coexist. Yeah, yeah, I think that the, the word business is is <laughs> the tricky part because I, I really like, like Michael's comment here in the chat about you know uh, understanding that the physical, biological, social, cultural ecosystems actually kind of come before of the business thinking. So you really need to understand what is happening uh, there in the environment, in the, in the kind of the tra tra traditional word of ecosystem to actually make it a, a viable business ecosystem. But um, so about this topic, if you are interested in the audience about uh, these kinds of topics more, so we have actually uh, tomorrow on on stage two we have more of these uh kind of legacy uh and, and digitalization cases towards a modern business and and, and uh environment uh and and ecosystem thinking so we have more of that and we actually do have even more of this kind of technology versus apis uh so so we call it operational technology so